Okay, so we're adding and subtracting rational expressions. Biggest thing is to uh, simplify each rational expression first before you find your lowest common denominator. You can't divide out between them, but within them, maybe you can. Okay, so here, uh, I can't divide out anything between them, uh, between the numerator and denominator, I should say. Because uh, these, right away, they're prime numbers. So that's how I know. These denominators can be factored, but I know I can't simplify it because there's no factor of 5 or 7. Saying that, I still need to factor. So I still need to factor each denominator. So that we can find, make sure that we find the lowest common denominator. In this one, if we didn't factor the denominators, we'd actually be okay. We have our common denominator of 2x plus 4 times 3x plus 6. And at the end, we would have a common factor of um, x plus 2 that we can divide out. Okay? But in, it doesn't matter. Basically, because these are only degree 1 denominators, it's going to work out okay if you don't find the lowest. But let's get into practice, because they're not always that easy. So here, your lowest common denominator, you might want to just put it separately somewhere. Take a look at each denominator. I need 2 times x plus 2. Okay, I need to have that. Then I look at my other one, I need to have 3 times x plus 2. Well, I already have an x plus 2. It's common to that. But I need a 3. So really, I need 3 times 2 times x plus 2, which is 6 x plus 2. 6 times x plus 2. Okay? With these ones, remember how I started finding the equivalent rational expression and showed them as, as two terms? I think I'm going to actually, to save a little bit of time in terms of copying out things, I'm going to just show one big rational expression. So they have the same denominator, right? So what we're doing here, in order to get 6 times x plus 2, I need to multiply top and bottom by 3 in that one. Okay? So really, I, if I show it here, it's 3 times 7. And here I need to multiply by 2. So I'm actually showing this twice, here and there, but you don't have to. What's up? Did we do this particular one? No. We did the first one, but not this one. Unless it worked ahead. Okay. So then that's going to be equal to 21 minus 10 over 6 times x plus 2, which is 11 over 6 times x plus 2. Still nothing divides out. 11 is a prime number, okay? So nothing divides out. At the end, take a look back at your restrictions. Always look back to your first factored form. Maybe you had divided out something with x in it, okay? If you had, then you need to include it. We didn't, so this, the restrictions from here are the same as from here. So x can't be equal to negative 2. All right, as I said, they do get a little bit more complicated. So the next one, we have trinomials in the denominators. All right, if you take a look at the numerators, this is subtraction. You might think, well, that's 5x plus 1 minus 5x plus 1. The whole thing is 0. It's not 0, right? These denominators are not the same. So we can't subtract the numerators. So factor everything first. Right? So I'll give you a minute or two to factor each denominator.
when we try to find our lowest common denominator, none of these, the 5x plus 1s don't divide out in either of these. Okay, so we now find our lowest common denominator. So I just copy out one of them. x minus 3 times x plus 1. So I have to have that. Then I look at the other one. I have to have x minus 3. Well, I already have it using the first one. And I have to have, have, to have x plus 2. So I include that as a factor as well. Okay, so even though in total there were four factors between the two rational expressions, one of them was common, so our lowest common denominator has just three, okay? If you had not factored, you would have said the lowest common denominator is this times this, okay? Then you would multiply this numerator by x squared minus x minus 6, you get a cubic. Here you do the same, you get a cubic. Then you would have to factor that cubic which it would be four terms, it would be probably be kind of challenging, okay? Whereas here, it's not going to be as challenging. We're going to end up with quadratics, degree two in the numerator, which we know how to factor. So if we look at this, we know now what our lowest common denominator is. So I'm just going to copy it out in one big fraction. Okay, I have a minus in between. And what am I doing here? I'm multiplying uh, this times whatever factor I'm missing here. So compare that to your lowest common denominator. I need to multiply by x plus 2. So you can actually show it on there or show it here. Okay. You can even make, actually, make this blue, this part blue. Okay, and then here, what factor is missing to get this is x plus 1. So that whole thing times x plus 1. So then it's that whole numerator and put brackets around it. Okay, it was two terms. You've got to multiply everything in there. So now this is where students go wrong. They think, oh, I'm just going to cross out that x plus 2, cross out the x plus 1s, and then I'm left with 5x plus 1 minus 5x plus 1 over x minus 3. Well, we just said you can't subtract those, right? You're not going to get zero. You can't do that. You can't divide out this x plus 2 with this because there's a subtracting next to it. It's not a factor. You can't divide out this plus x plus 1 with this because that's not a factor. There's a subtraction there. Okay? So I've done this in, in one sort of step rather than two separate to save yourself some time, but don't start just crossing everything off. Okay? Think about why you would be crossing it off. So now, if you read the, the steps, we have to expand the numerator, not the denominator, expand and simplify, and then collect like terms. So we'll have 5x squared plus 7x plus 2. If you want to keep brackets around it, you can. I am going to keep brackets around the next one because it's a subtraction. Let's copy out your denominator. Okay, and then multiply these binomials together. 5x squared plus 6x plus 1. Okay. Then I'm going to get rid of the brackets in the numerator to get the correct signs. So notice how that adding there becomes a subtracting, adding becomes a subtracting. So I'm subtracting everything in the brackets there. Okay. What's that? No, 7x? Oh, 
it's 11 X. Yeah. Sorry. It's 11 X. Thank you. 11 X. And then five plus one is six. So the next one's right. Um, and then collect like terms. You'll notice they actually, the x squared terms go to zero, but there's still other terms. So you end up with 5x plus 1. Over x minus 3 times x plus 1 times x plus 3. And then state your restriction. Okay. So we never divided out anything from a denominator. So you can use the last one. Or go back and just take a look here. All right. Just in case. So 3, negative 1. We already have the 3, negative 2. So negative 2, negative 1, 3. Next one, same type of deal. Factor first. See if you can divide anything out. Okay? Do not start going, oh yeah, that three goes into that nine, those twos divide out, that kind of thing. Factor first. Maybe within uh, one of the fractions or both of them, you can divide something up. So you'll notice here that when you factor everything, you can simplify within each of the rational expressions, okay, before you start subtracting. So if you didn't, then you would um, find your lowest common denominator, you would do your work, it would still work out, but then you would have to factor at the end to simplify. This might make it a little bit easier. So those divide out and these divide out. Okay. Totally going to make it easier because what's left is a denominator of x plus 1. So this ends up being 1 over x plus 1 minus 3 over x plus 1. Is that the same denominator? You didn't have to find a common denominator. Okay. Worked out that they had the same denominator, so that's just negative 2. Okay, so you either show the negative there, or negative 2 over x plus 1. Negative up front, yeah? Um, the operation is the Oh, oh sorry. So, as soon as you see it, tell me. So that's 4. I'm not doing very well today, are I? Okay, so that's 4. It's adding, not subtracting. Sorry, the last one was subtracting. So, it's adding. Okay, same deal though. Once you, you have the same denominator, add the numerators in this case. See if you can reduce it, but you can't. Okay. 
I've added another one there that I want you to do. Oh, you have one? Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Sorry. I put it in there. We'll do that. We'll come back to that one at the end. I just uh, thought it was there's space there. Sorry. The smart file is, uh, is not lined up with the notes. Okay, a little bit harder factoring. Hint, find common factors first. And again, if you want to do some of your factoring on the side before you put it in, go for it. More questions? Oh yeah, what would be the restrictions on that one? Is this is this correct? No, what am I missing? The one's back up here, right? So I need negative two and positive three as well. Okay. So that one we reduced it, so that's why you have to look at the first factor form. Also factor the num second numerator, because there is a common factor. So then, threes divide out there, fives divide out. Unfortunately, the x minus 2 doesn't, but that's okay. So I'm actually just going to rewrite it again, just so it kind of keeps things on track, especially since I've been making some mistakes. I want to make it clear. Okay, and then you want to look through your lowest common denominator. So, I just copy out the first denominator, both factors, I need both of them. Then I look at the next one, I need an x minus 6, well I already have it. And I need an x minus 4, which I don't have, so I include that. Okay, so luckily, there was that uh, x minus 6 in common. If there wasn't, then it would be basically a degree 4 denominator, and you'd have to multiply um, by two factors. 
in the numerators for both of them. We don't do that that often. We will when we get to math uh, 20 and 30. We'll do that more. We kind of keep it to things that we can factor um, at this, this level. Okay, so now, now I'm going to show my one big fraction. And it's subtracting. I copied that down, right? Right? And then it's x minus 6, x minus 3, x minus 4. Okay, so what am I multiplying this by to get this denominator? x minus 4, right? So x, maybe I'll put that in red, x minus 4. What am I multiplying x minus 2 by to get this denominator? I need x minus 3. Make sure, especially because of the subtracting, Put brackets around that x minus 2, and then we're multiplying by x minus 3. And again, you are not dividing anything out at this stage, right? You need to expand and subtract those. So it's going to be x squared minus 4x minus, and I'm going to leave what I get when I uh, multiply these binomials together. I'm going to leave it in brackets to make sure I get the correct sign. I noticed some of you were struggling with that on the test yesterday. So when I get rid of those brackets, it's minus x squared plus 5x minus 6. And we're going to collect like terms. Turns out nicely that x squared go to 0. That's going to end up being x minus 6. And looky, looky, loo. Okay. What can I do now? Yeah, that's like having brackets there, right? So that is a factor, that's a factor. restrictions. If you just look at this, it would be 3 and 4, but remember we had x minus 6 is in both of them. So we need to have that 6 as well. Okay. So that's the last one on your page, right? Yeah. So if you have some space, if you don't, get out your own paper. We're going to do one more. Nothing to factor in the first two rational expressions, but there is in the third one. So factor that.
So, in terms of your lowest common denominator, if I go to the biggest one, I've got x minus 6, x plus 1. Well, it turns out that's the denominator of the middle rational expression, and that's the denominator of the first one. Right? So, this is the lowest common denominator. So, we're not going to have to change anything in this one. Okay? When I show my uh, big fraction, big rational expression with that common denominator. And here, remember, you're going to have to multiply top and bottom by x minus 6. So really, that's 1 times x minus 6. But you don't have to show the left, right? But I did. Plus x and that, and you have to multiply by uh, x plus 1. Okay, so if I just cover that up, there's my equivalent fraction for the first. I cover this up, there's my equivalent fraction for the second. And then this doesn't have to change. So when I subtract though, be careful. I'm subtracting everything in that numerator. Okay, so I can't just copy out 5x minus 2. That's wrong. Right? That, when I get rid of the brackets, will be minus 5x plus 2. Because it's like having brackets and you're subtracting everything inside the brackets. Okay? So if you wanted to do it in smaller steps, maybe this is what I would do. Up to you. Okay? If you're good at remembering, then you don't have to do that. But here, now, I'll just get rid of all the brackets with the correct signs. So that's going to be x minus 6 plus x squared plus x minus 5x plus 2. Okay, so I would highly recommend you put brackets around that numerator there so that you don't forget about signs. Okay, now if we collect like terms, we get x squared plus 2x minus 5x minus 3x. Uh, minus 4. Okay? Now, see if you can factor that again, that numerator. Okay? So it's kind of like a new question. Simplify that rational expression. You would factor the numerator, see if there was anything you find. Okay? Factor. And it turns out it factors to x minus 4 times x plus 1. Mm -hmm. And so now those x plus 1s divide out. Okay. So your final answer is x minus 4 over x minus 6. In terms of your restrictions, don't just go by the last one. Remember your original denominators way back up here were x minus 6 times x plus 1. That's your lowest common denominator before you divided anything else. So that's going to be 6 and negative 1. Okay. So if that was on the question and you did all this part right, but you forgot